It's the worst tripod. I didn't wear a graphic tee today, Dalton, like I like to on the show. But I saw uh, Dale Braddock had on a Captain America shirt. That's I, I should have traded. Would that be weird if we traded shirts? No, it's probably the first week you haven't worn one. I think so. Hey, everybody. It's me, Brad. That's Dalton. This is the DJ Preps Football Preview Show. Uh, what, it's week 14? Dalton of the football season. They got the quarterfinal round of the playoffs coming up. So what we're going to do, we're going to talk about three of those games and uh, break them down. Three keys to the game. We'll make predictions. We'll also have the Broughton Award and we'll go over Friday's coverage plan. So let's uh, first review last week's picks, Dalton. Hey, we both did really good. 3-0, and both of us. No, back to back weeks, we both gone 3-0? and No, we went 2-1, and both of us, the week before. Improvement. Yeah. So improvement, definitely. Undefeated last week. But overall, Dalton still leads. Seven and two overall. My record is six and three since I'm retiring the coin. I'll catch you this week, Dalton. Uh, here are the three games to watch: Oklahoma at Smithville in a 1A playoff game, Lafayette at West Point in 5A, and Water Valley at Houston in 3A. Let's start with Oklahoma at Smithville. Nine and three Chieftains at ten and three Seminoles. The matchup: a this is a uh, rematch, Dalton. Uh, both of these teams are in Division One One A. Smithville beat. Oklahoma on September 28th, 27-22, and went on to win the division title. So, revenge on the mind of Oklahoma. Three keys to the game. Key number one, Dalton, special teams. Smithville, in that first meeting, scored two special teams touchdowns. I believe they uh, returned the opening kickoff for a touchdown, and they returned a muffed punt for a touchdown. So, uh, that will be something to watch there. Uh, key number two, Oklahoma's pass defense. Uh, Octavian Miller. The quarterback for Smithville, good player, dual threat. He had two touchdown passes last time, but he also had two picks. And uh, that defense, Dalton, for Oklahoma, they, they got some speed. They can they can make some plays. Yeah, I want to see how much he's going to test uh, Stanfield back there in the in the, in the secondary, see if uh, see who wins that battle. Yeah, Ja'Cory Stanfield, a great two-way player there uh, for Oklahoma. And then uh, key number three, which team's nickname is part of a famous song's title, Seminoles or Chieftains? No? Come on, we had this in a headline the other day, Dalton. Chieftains. Seminole Wind by John Anderson. So close. A uh, classic country song from the 1990s. When, what What paper was that in the headline? What? What paper was that? For yeah, it was when they won the, against Bickersville, I think. Seminole oh. Wind. Okay, prediction time, Dalton. Team and score. Mm, Got to go Smithville. We picked against them too many times. Uh, yes. I think it's going to be another close one. I'm going to go Smithville 32-30. Yes, uh, I'm done picking against Smithville. We picked them. We picked against them in the Bakersville game and maybe some other games. It was this game. Yeah, it was Oklahoma game. So I'm going to go with Smithville as well in this one. I'm going to say 27-25. Okay. So that is game number one, Oklahoma at Smithville. Uh, game number two, Lafayette at West Point. Another rematch, Dalton. These teams were both in 1-5A. Uh, West Point, uh, the 1-5A champ beat Lafayette in the regular season 14 to 13. That was back on September 21st at West Point. This game is also at West Point. Uh, the difference being a blocked extra point in that game. Uh, Lafayette, by the way, has three losses by a total of six points. Mm -hmm. So they could easily be undefeated right now. Uh, they're nine and three, West Point 11 and one. Three keys to the game. Key number one, Lafayette's rushing attack. We've talked about it before, Dalton. they got three guys that can really run the ball well. Jamie Shaw, Lance Stewart, and the quarterback, Randy Anderson. But uh, last time against West Point, after a good first half, only 36 yards rushing in the second half. That that West Point defense, Dalton, they, that's why they've won two straight championships. They know how to make adjustments. And they have so many kids on there that, you know, it's not the big-name kids. It's just so many that are so good collectively. Yeah. and it, that, It's impressive. Good coaching, too, there with Chris Chambliss. Uh, key number two, turnovers. Uh, quite a few. I mean, the, both defenses played well last time. Uh, West Point committed three turnovers. Lafayette lost two fumbles. One of them they, one of them they lost at the West Point one-yard line. When they were about to score the other, they fumbled back into their own end zone. West Point recovered for a touchdown. So uh, the defenses, I think, will uh, have a big say again in this matchup. And a key number three, which head coach would win in a staring contest? Chris Chambliss of West Point or Michael Fair of Lafayette? Both intimidating guys. I think I'd go Chambliss. Chambliss, I don't I think Chambliss has never blinked yeah, I don't, in his life. I've never seen him blink. He's quick staring contest. Okay, we don't have time for that. Uh prediction, uh, Dalton. Yeah, I can't pick again to West Point at West Point. There's nope. no way. Okay, um well. offense is gonna make some adjustments, like we said earlier. Cham like I said earlier, championship caliber teams make adjustments. Um I'm going to go West Point 21-14. I'm also going to go with West Point because West Point is at home. It's 1-2 straight. It's like the Alabama rule. Don't pick against them until somebody beats them. So I'll say uh, West Point 21, Lafayette 20. And that is game number two. Game number three. 
3A matchup. Water Valley at Houston. Water Valley 11-2. Houston 11-1. Uh, got a big play offense in Houston against a lockdown defense in Water Valley. Three keys to the game. Key number one, big play is uh, Houston. They got that big play potential with Jalen May, the quarterback and a punt returner. He's got 30 two total touchdowns, uh, not counting the five passing touchdowns he has. Mm -hmm. uh, he's got them uh, mostly on the ground. He's got some receiving. He's got a couple of punt returns for touchdowns. He's just an explosive uh, playmaker, Dalton. And uh, you've seen him. I mean, they're a little different from last year, but they can they can make stuff happen. Yeah, and he was pretty much held in check against Aberdeen when I saw him only because I think he had 360-yard touchdown runs called back. Yeah, yeah he, he did. still <laughs> ended up with a 50-yard touchdown run, but, you know, like the big play, you know, Aberdeen held – Penalties helped them out, but uh, sure. you know they didn't get the big play on Aberdeen very much, and it was a close game. But yeah, they get them, they kind of blow out some teams. Yeah, uh, Water Valley coach Brad Embry said Houston is a big play waiting to happen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Certainly, uh, key number two, that Water Valley defense, man, they are really good. Only giving up about uh, ten point nine points a game. They're big up front, got a couple of really good defensive tackles, and uh, they're fast uh, pretty much everywhere else. They've scored ten defensive touchdowns, Dalton, on fumble returns and interceptions. 10. That's, that's a lot. Impressive. Created 27 turnovers. So that's a big play defense there against a big play offense. Well, and they showed against Boonville last week they are a good defense. Well, I think of the game before Boonville, the first round, they had, what, eight turnovers for us on defense? Yeah, I think that's that? right, yeah. That's a good defense. Yeah, it is. Should be a good game. Uh, key number three, which town has the superior festival? Now all these small towns have festivals. Houston's got the Flywheel Festival. It's twice a year. I mean, twice the fun. But then Water Valley has the Water Valley Watermelon Carnival, which is a carnival. Advantage Water Valley. Prediction time, Dalton. I think Houston knocks off what it did last week and grabs this one. 28-21. I'm going to go with Water Valley. And this is how I'm going to catch up to you, Dalton. I'm going to go with Water Valley 25-19. Uh, to 19. Okay. All right, there we go. And those are your three games to watch for this week in high school football. Brawlton Award time. Best one-two punch from last week, Dalton. Starkville. They got a lot of guys. They got more than just a one-two punch. They got like a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight punch. Mm -hmm. But uh, Luke Altmeyer and Rufus Harvey last week in a uh, dominant 37 to uh, seven win over a South Panola. Uh, Altmeyer, the quarterback, 14 of 20, passing 199 yards, had two rushing touchdowns as well. And then uh, Rufus Harvey, uh, receiver and punt returner, six catches, 114 yards, a 48-yard punt return for touchdown. Uh, Starkville gets Horn Lake this week. Should be a good one. Yes, it will. And this is where we're going to be this Friday night covering high school football playoffs. Six games, as usual. Oklahoma at Smithville, Melissa Metter, Louisville at Pontotoc, John Wise, Greenwood at Corinth, that guy, uh, Water Valley at Houston, Ethan Turner, Lafayette at West Point, Paul Jones, and I will be at Philadelphia, Calhoun City. And that is it for this episode of the DJ Preps Football Preview Show. Uh, be sure to follow us on Twitter at DJournal Preps. Check out our podcast, Prep Rally, every Wednesday in iTunes. Your podcast apps are at preprally.djournal.com. Okay, we will be back next week for a special Thanksgiving episode of the DJ Preps Football Preview Show. See you then. Ooh, that was nice. That was your best throw. Maybe all year. <laughs>